faith that after today's sermon that you are going to stay inside, Amen. that you are going to receive your miracle, Amen. that you are going to receive your healing. I want you to shout a big hallelujah. Hallelujah, that will make heaven to know that you are serious. Amen. That will make God to move because of your faith. Amen. That will make God to move because of your zeal. Amen. That hallelujah is going to give you victory today in the name of Jesus. You can sit down before we start our sermon. One word I want to give is the book of Proverbs says, One man with wisdom is more than ten in the city. Maybe your kindred, your village, only one man with full of wisdom is more than ten. You know, there is an adage that says, good, Two good heads are better than, than one. You can have ten, ten heads. You can, you can have fifteen heads. But only one, when God gives you that wisdom, is better than many. So there is something, maybe you want to come out to say something. The difference between I have something to say and I want to say something. When you have wisdom, then you have something to say. Then I, there is a difference between I have something to say and I want to say something. Praise the Lord. So God is going to give you the wisdom. You'll be more than one. You'll be more than ten in the city. When you come out, you'll be more than twenty people. When you come out, you more than ten. Bible say one man with wisdom is more than ten. So that when you want to say something, they will say you have something to say. Not that you want to want to say something. So God is going to give you that wisdom. We know that to make you to come out when you are coming. They will tell twenty people sit down. It's the person that has something to say is coming out. Not the person that wants to say something. Praise the Lord. God is going to give you the grace in Jesus' name. Someone's debate today is talking about good declarations. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you because you are what? No one is like you. No one can be compared with you. We glorify your name. We exalt your name in the name of Jesus. Father, have mercy on your children. Deliver your children from spies. Yeah. Any agent of darkness, informers of the enemy of this church, may God expose and disgrace them in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Father, as we are going to use this to present this sermon, let this sermon bring healing yeah. and blessing to your children. Yeah. And disgrace the enemy. Yeah. Disgrace yeah. past. Yeah. Disgrace yeah. informers of the enemy. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Father, as they hear this one, bless all of them. Yeah. Bless all of them. Give them the heart desire. Yeah. Bless them spiritually. Yeah. Father, anything they pray for me, you do it for them. Yeah. Father, so grant them spiritual blessing Amen. to live a life that pleases Amen. you so that at the last day Amen. they will meet you on the cloud. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So that in your church and other person, you are doing it. Look at Romans says it's Romans 2. Judge, don't condemn another person because that person you are condemning, that thing you are condemning, that you do this and you are condemning yourself. Bible says no man is just. Nobody does what pleases God except Jesus. That's why he said, this is my beloved one with whom I am well pleased. And it's only his sacrifice that pleases God. Any other sacrifice you are doing is nonsense. He, oh, he, God doesn't look for your sacrifice to answer your prayers. God doesn't look for your sacrifice to do it. He looks on Jesus. That's why he said his grace is sufficient. He's pleased with Jesus. That's why he said he's coming on Jesus when they sacrifice animals to uh, for atonement. At a time, they go and sacrifice again because those things don't please God. The only something for this is once and for all. So, this is a someone that is a do good declaration. The declaration number one is that you must, the number one declaration is you must believe that you are justified by Christ before you present any case to God. In order to get fast answer, present yourself to God as a sin. Don't present about I'm righteous, I don't sin, I don't do this. Your righteousness is like a future life. You see every minute. You can ask for forgiveness now. You don't know that the eye you look somebody you have seen. So you see, Jesus is the only person that stayed in this world for 33 years. He's not seen for one day. That's why I to say he accredited the righteousness of Jesus in you. You can ask forgiveness in your heart. Use your heart to see in the next second. That's why in every minute of your life you thank Jesus for coming. Because if you read the Bible, before the coming of Jesus Christ, sickness, people are being sick like we are eating please. You read the Bible, say Jesus, we are passing. They will bring up sick people in the mass. Many sick people, they will say just like the mass, Jesus will pass and be healing them. And be healing them. That time, sin causes sickness. Any sin, but that's the we are living under law. Any sin you commit has a law attached to it. Many not practice. I started looking at him, many of you that are sickness, see saying you commit now. If Jesus didn't come, many of, many of those people that are committed to the sin, leper, leprosy immediately is the causes of law. Sin every year. 
That's why Jesus, your sacrifice is not there. It is something to have thought that you didn't commit those things now. Jesus, power, because of the blood. But you will not say, because you, grace is sufficient and continue in sin. That's why Bible says it's okay. God has seen the sacrifice of Jesus and went to and said, okay, my grace is sufficient. It's enough for God. It's okay for God. He's well pleased. God is blessing you. He's blessing you in this world. You remember rapture. Anything you request from God, he will do it for you. Whether you're a sinner, that's why he said he read for for the just and the unjust. Whether you're a sinner, whether you're not a sinner, when you cry to God, forgive you, look on yourself, Jesus Christ, he will give it to you. But the problem is what happens at the rapture day. Because if you continue apologizing, God will do that thing for you, and you're enjoying in that blessing. And we start knowing that that blessing will make you to repent or that you'll be converted. Then when rapture comes, where are you going? That's why it is necessary. When you re believe, to you tell Jesus, tell God that you are a sinner, that you are nothing, that you are a future, you are righteousness, not like a future right, he will bless you. You try your best to keep yourself holy. You try your best to keep yourself holy. Even if you don't keep yourself holy, if you request another thing, he will do it. But the problem is, when rapture comes, will you be transformed? Where will you be? Did that brother have no more grace? Grace will leave. Grace is only before rapture. Immediately rapture comes, when pure, no more grace. Grace is left. So this is what you're going to ask yourself. So anything you're requesting from God, first you ask to God. Tell God that you are not just. You can see David. David tell God, please don't enter into judgment with me. Because if you enter into judgment with me, in short, he will die. You, because that time they were on the crosses on the body of God. He said, in your sight, no man living shall be justified. Yeah. In your sight, no man living shall be justified. So if God, it took God to judge him so that he will not die. Because he was hiding for his enemy. Saul was attacking him. Saul was finding a way to kill him. And he was asking God to refuse. He said, God, don't judge him. That's why Jesus came. In the time of Mary Magdalene, they brought Mary Magdalene. That he is a, she's a sinner. She's a prostitute. Jesus was looking at all of them. That's why he said, when you are condemning person, you are doing the same thing. He saw that all of them, many of them even fornicated before bringing Mary Magdalene. Jesus asked them, if you know, you have not done such a thing. First of all, drop the stone. All of them, everyone left. Meaning that you should leave judgment for Jesus. Don't judge. Jesus. Don't judge another person. Because you can be where you judge another person. Rapture comes. And do yourself that in your dreams. That's what that will see. First of all, remove this thing. That is in your eye before removing another person. Judgment belongs to only Jesus. It's only him because he's a righteous man. He's a man that does not commit sin. Praise the Lord. So you tell God you are not dead. It pleases him. Tell him that you are living by the grace of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. That's what he says in Galatians 2.16. He says, We who, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of law, you are not justified by your work, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of law. For the works of law shall not be justified. If you are living on your own, you cannot be justified. You are living on the justification of Jesus Christ. And if you go to 2 Corinthians 5, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, it says, 2 Corinthians 5, 21 says, for he made himself to be sin for us, who knew not sin, that we may be made righteousness for God in him. He made himself to be sin. He's a righteous. So the righteousness is accredited. Maybe no credit, just got it. Just go from God. He, Jesus, God took the righteousness of God from the God. Dash. Accredit. He made himself to be sin. But he also So if you feel any time you are, if you don't know it means from today, that the hands you have. You can handle something with your hand. It's the strength of Jesus. That's what Bible says. Without me, you can do nothing. I can do all things through Christ that trusted me. Jesus is only way the truth and the life. He's only one that you have. It's in hand that you can handle. Even like you're walking. Even as a sinner. Even as a fornicator. It's his strength by the grace. But the problem is what happens at the last day. His hand that will make you to handle. His eye that makes you to see. It's his strength that makes you to walk. The pregnancy you are is his strength. Everything you're doing is with Jesus. That's why I say without him, nothing. He didn't say you can do something. Nothing. So for you to know, don't say that you are living on your own righteousness. Oh, because you pray and pray. It's only by the grace. It's just as if you wrote it. So may God give you the grace. 
the gods are creating special things for you today. And that and creation of that just the way you to pray to the may God answer all the prayers. Yeah. May God write you your heart desires yeah. in the name of Jesus. And may God give you the spirit when you're praying. First of all, say God, I am not just. My righteousness is like your faith. <laughs> Present your case to have the promising that you're going to live your life when he blesses you. God to go back to sin in the name of Jesus. Amen. And number two is for God to hide you. Another good declaration is for God to hide you. Because someone opened the book of Psalm 143, verse 9. For God to hide you. Deliver God from your enemies. The only thing you know, other thing you need for God is for God to hide you. Because you need to be hidden. When God doesn't hide you, enemy will see you fast. Many people are being monitored as you are staying here and they monitor you in the mirror. They monitor you in the business. Basically, they monitor you in satellite. They monitor you when you are sleeping. You know they know that the spirit is standing by your bed looking at you. They monitor your pregnancy when you have a baby for your girl. They monitor you when you want to get a fleet man so that they will suppress it. They monitor you when they want to give you paper. And they hear it, they will just go to the office and beg them. They will just tell the paper and give to another person. They monitor you when you want to get a good workplace. There are things that are called monitoring spirits. They are real. Today, God is taking it away from you in the name of Jesus. Amen. They said, you tell God to hide me. Good day, we don't go there. Hide me. He knows why he's telling God to hide him. When Saul was persecuting him, he had a lot of enemies. So as I say, human being, you have enemies. As far as your Christ, your enemies are because of the warfare that are devil and his agents that doesn't want to use eyes to see children of God. So anytime you are, you tell them God to hide you. If you're pregnant, tell God to hide your pregnancy. Enemy will not see it. When God hides you, when they search you in native doctor, they will not see you. They will cover you with darkness. Go by the cloud and darkness surround you. If you want cloudness, he will hide you. If you want darkness, he will hide you. In darkness, when he hides you there, when they call you in the middle, they will not see anything. Where is he? I saw him last week. I went to native doctor last week. I called him and I saw him. But today, I could not see him again. God has hidden you. When God hides you, or please want to come to your way, they want to go and check. They will not see you. And they saw her. I saw her face yesterday. I went to that wooden seat. God has hidden it. They hide your peppers, hide your fights. They even say, Yes, we want to her fight. They want to show his pepper. They want to release for him. But today we cannot see. May God hide your blessings from the enemies in the name of Jesus. Amen. When they try to monitor your pregnancy, monitor your happiness, monitor your upliftment, monitor your dreams, monitor your destiny, they will never see it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Enemies God. That is the work of them. I hear that there is now a spiritual satellite. They use satellite to monitor you. So you go to bed and tell God to cover you with his spirit. Hide you in his pavilion. Pavilion means, oh, indeed, what they call it, oh, pavilion. When you go to a traditional ruler, that's what they used to build. Traditional ruler used to that is always outside. And times inside, it's pavilion. Bible says God has his own pavilion. When you tell God to hide you in his own pavilion, enemies will never see you. Hide you, hide everything. Anything you are requesting from God, tell God to hide it from enemies. God can hide. When native doctor hides anything from you, and when God says on hide, I open it, it will be open to you. No problem, stop it. But when God hides, and native doctor, someone goes over to open, they count. They will not even see it. They won't even try. So God is going to hide your blessings today in the name of Jesus. Amen. And then you will never see it until it releases to you. Amen. Because it's only God that can hide. Letting God, the people that go to the is going through wrong way. Letting God that cannot hide. When they hide, when God says, expose, one minute is exposed. But when God hides, letting God say, he will die. So anybody that has is troubling you or what is troubling you, or maybe your blessings that you're looking for, you are not getting it because it's exposed to the enemy to see. Today, God is hiding them in the name of Jesus. Amen. They will go and find them, they will not see them again. Amen. And then when you try it, may the fire of God turn on them. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you must get your blessings. Amen. You must possess your possession. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Another thing that makes it to be on hide is sin. Sin can make your blessing when God hides it, when you commit it tomorrow, you will go free the enemy will see it. That's why you need to be in trust. Be in a lot. Bible says the enemy, they are watchful. Be in alert means watch day and night. Be in watch day and night. Watch and pray. 
Ask God for forgiveness. Be pleading with the blood of just every time. It's free of charge. The blood of just don't pay money. You don't pay euro to plead it. It's free. Anytime you buy, just ask God forgive my blood of just because God can hide your blessings to that same What sin is making you open it to come on. So may God give you favor, give you the grace. Your blessings that God has hidden from enemy, He will not expose it to them in the name of Jesus. May God give you the grace in Jesus' name. And finally, 2 Corinthians 12 9 says, finally, for someone to open it before we close. 2 Corinthians 12 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ will rest upon me. He said, My grace is sufficient. He's telling you that. You don't need any other thing that will make you to comfortable. There are many people that what is sufficient for them is going to your daughter or ask to you able. There are people that is what is sufficient for them is getting blessings through sin. Getting blessings through through sin is not sufficient. Bible says, God says, my grace is sufficient, meaning that he has sinned, you have sinned, we have committed sin, we have disappointed him, and now Jesus has used the blood to redeem you. Jesus said, uh -huh. now this is sufficient for me. Those animals they used to kill, Sabbath and children used to do, those animals they used to kill the Old Testament are not sufficient for God to forgive. Those ones are temporary. God is saying, now my grace is sufficient to you. The blood of Jesus, the pardon, the remission of sin, Jesus did on the cross of Christ, yes, now, uh -huh. I am well pleased. Now, my children, you can go on, request, my strength will make you to be strong, the weak. That's why when you say, when the weak you are weak, you say, I am strong. Not with your own strength, it's by the strength of Jesus. His grace is sufficient to you. So don't go and look for anything from another city. Yeah. Maybe some people think that if they don't go to another man to collect money, that's why we're not helping. That's why they say you're going through another place. Some people go, if you don't go here, you go to a commission, you go to an aspect, you don't go to a commission, that's why it's what the devil is using to make other people to go. All that things to be sufficient. Why you have that grace? When you ask God, you kneel down and pray three times a day, fast and pray. If you know, even your whole you will know where that God will answer your request. So let the grace of God be sufficient for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everybody here that grace is not sufficient or you are is reduced, or the devil has reduced the grace of God in your life, you won't say no other. May God pardon you today in the name of Jesus. Amen. And his grace will be sufficient. Where, where you say yes, it will happen. No power will stay in the name of Jesus. Amen. And make Jesus as the only way. Don't go and get your blessings through that way. Don't try to find out through that Don't call people from home and say, go here, go here. You don't know where they're going. You can come to church tomorrow, today. Tomorrow they come home. Go to the, you don't know where they get their power. You don't know where the church they're going. That is another way. When God wants to bless you, which one am I going to be? He's in Victoria's family. Some people is asking questions for him in another place. Which means two or two ways. It becomes difficult, difficult for you to get your answer here. That's the problem. So Jesus is the only way. You're sure. You'll be sure of where you are. That, that is, we are one place. Only way so that God will bless you. God will see that you are coming through the right source. Right source, Jesus. You don't through the wrong source. And answer your prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. And finally, you always declare this almighty act. Remember, meditate on the things of the old. Bible says in Psalm 145 that I declare his word first work. I meditate on his work. That will increase your faith. Many of you don't even remember one miracle a day. You cannot even think one day say, let me go back. You just close your body in the bed and be laughing with your God. And remember, oh, crossing the race is a wonderful miracle. During the time of Asia, crossing Jordan, River Jordan. You meditate, oh, it's true, David killed the Goliath with a stone. You meditate again, oh, during the time of Noah, how God destroyed the whole world, only you and family was saved. Oh, Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, Gomorrah, Abraham was saved. Oh, you don't know what you didn't remember. It. Those things the Bible say you must remember. So can someone read the finalist and one for the fact? You remember, meditate. It increases your faith and it moves God. It's made you to make God to remember the wonders He has done. And you come and do your own wonder. Read Psalm 145 by 6. And men shall speak of the 
A man will speak of the terrible heart and we declare thy greatness. You remember all those things. Of your terrible heart, we saw those miracles. Men shall speak. This is on people. You will speak. You will declare it. Many people don't do it. This is an expression of God in the Bible. When you do it, you see things begin to change. In those impossibilities that God meant to be possible. When you just lie down and close it up. Bible, how God, all the acts of God, you remember it then you, when you remember it, it moves God. God is taking this person. Like like God, like this thing I did to her in school, you move it with faith, God, you just like that. So many can see you laughing, you say you're mad. Let them, let them, let them, let them, you're mad with your God. Let that person go. It moves God. You are remembering God, the actions he did. Okay, I will come to that one I will do something impossible. That impossibility is reminded, it's meditated and I will trust it. I will do it for you. May God give you the grace to meditate on the things of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Meditate on the miracles of God so that God will remember all of you. Amen. Stand up, let us pray. We need to thank God for making you to hear this sermon, for giving you the privilege to be here today, to understand His word, to understand His truth. Thank God for everything. Thank God for everything. Thank God for giving you Jesus. Thank God for giving you Jesus. Thank God for giving you Jesus. Thank God, I thank you for giving me your son. Who released his Holy Spirit to come and die for me and you? Thank God, I appreciate his Holy Spirit. I appreciate his Holy Spirit. Tell you I sin against you. Have mercy and forgive. Tell God to forgive you. Forgive you all your sins. Tell him that you are like a, that your righteousness is like a fruit to rise. Tell him that it is true. What you say, Lord, it is true. That no man is judged. Including me, say including you yourself, including that God judge. At all. Say God, because Bible says, you say I don't understand, making God a liar. If you live on your own righteousness, you are gone. You are gone. If you start to live on your own righteousness, you are destroyed. If you are living for the righteousness of one man, that God has no sin. The first Adam sinned. Why? Eve. Adam and God doesn't want us to be destroyed. He said another Adam. Who made you? Who made you to come to church and sing and sing? Who made you to wake up from your sleep? Who made you when you sin? God, His grace will forgive you. You will not be condemned with the causes of law. Who will deliver you from the causes of law? From ourselves, our spirit. We need to thank God. Thank God that I know when you abuse His grace, that you never abuse His grace. Tell God that we not abuse the grace. You get what? I will live a holy life. Then make your request now. Make your request now. You can answer. If you know anything you need from God, begin to talk now. Tell God now, now. The power is here. My and the truth of our The power of God has come now. He's ready to answer your prayers. Make your request. Open your mouth. Make your request right now. In the name of Jesus, begin to talk. Make sure you talk. He's here now. He's now he has come again to answer. The power has landed in mighty. He's here with his mighty angels. He's here with war angels. He's here with security angels. He's here with the fortune angels. Yeah. 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 To answer your prayer. Yeah. The many angels are here. Yeah. Angels of healing are here. If you want healing, then pray to God now. Request, request. They are here. They have come. They have come to manifest the power of God. The angels for deliverance are here to deliver you from the powers of darkness. From the deliver you to deliver you from the marriage spirit. To deliver you from the ghost and covenant. To deliver you from the money of that spirit. From to deliver you from the spirit of the of the cause. The spirit of God is here. He can to talk. He's here now. The power of God is the power of God is moving. Begin to talk. He's here now. Continue telling him. He's here. They are coming to pray as far as they spoke. The prayer is going up now. It's entering into the golden box of the 24 hours. It's entering just now. It's being answered. Begin to talk God. Who has joined the prayer with the Lord? Let's go. Thank you for commanding for giving a very wonderful command. Tell God your documents. Your documents must be released. Your miracle get must be released. Are you waiting for a work? You must get that work. Don't forget to say it. The power of God is here to release baptism of fire. Fire everywhere. Fire everywhere. So that there will fire. Let your power.
Jesus. I come here to pray that your family with the blood of Jesus. May God bless you. May God answer all your prayers. In the name of Jesus, Amen. No evil will see you. Evil that follow people will not follow you. Evil that follow churches will not follow you. Evil that follow children will never follow their children. 